Welcome to Franchise Marketing Radio, brought to you by SEO Samba, comprehensive high-performing marketing solutions for mature and emerging franchise brands. To supercharge your franchise marketing, go to seosamba.com. That's S-E-O-S-A-M-B-A dot com. Lee Cantor here, another episode of Franchise Marketing Radio, and this is going to be a good one. Today we have with us Michael and Celinda Mitchell with Shuck and Shack Oyster Bar in Cumming, Georgia. Welcome. Thank you, Lee. Thanks for having us. Thank well, be- you. well, before we get too far into things, tell us about Shuck and Shack Oyster Bar. How are you serving folks? Well, we, we um, they all started back in 2007 over in Carolina Beach. And they were having such success with that, that concept that they decided in 2014 that they would um, start franchising. And um, we bought into the franchise in 2019. The concept itself is a real casual, beachy atmosphere uh, where the service is engaging and they're talking with the guests. It's more of a dialogue, not a monologue with our customers. And we have great seafood, wings, burgers. Great oysters. And then uh, what, what's your background? Uh, were you in the restaurant business beforehand? Yeah. I've been in the restaurant business since I was 18. Uh, so that's many, many, many years. <laughs> so um, I did operations for 22 years with major corporations like Brinker, uh, Landry Seafood, um, Morrison's. I've been doing this for a very, very long time. Now, what'd and, you like about Shuck and Shack? Well, because I've done a lot of seafood restaurants, and I know seafood very well, like I did l and Seafood back in the day. I've done those Crab Shack. I've done uh, Grady's American Grill, a lot of a lot of other seafood restaurants and, and casual dining. Um, and I just loved it when I when I ran across it. I've been looking for something, and I didn't know if it was going to be a restaurant or what, but I kept coming to restaurants because that's just what I'm more comfortable with, and especially with seafood. So when I did, I came across it and I said, this is it. And so my wife and I, Sonda, went up to uh, Wilmington, where the franchisor is, and had a discovery day, met with everybody, had lunch, talked. Five, six, seven hours later, we headed back home, uh, back to the Atlanta area. And sure enough, uh, we we were sold. It was it was a great hit. And not having very much seafood in this area, we said that's going to be great in the coming area. And then um, how did you guys deal with the pandemic? Because I know in Georgia, there's been a lot of, you know, everybody's closed, everybody's open. It's, you know, only a few people can be in there. How'd you guys manage that or still probably managing it right now? Right. We are somewhat still managing that. Um, Well, back in March, um, you know, that weekend prior to St. Patrick's Day, we were geared up for a really busy uh, weekend, and sure enough, with the pandemic happening, the 50 percent uh, uh, we lost 50 percent of our sales that weekend, and we thought, "Oh God, what's going on here?" We went into Monday thinking Tuesday was going to be really busy for St. Patty's Day, and sure enough, um, I had to literally shut down on St. Patty's Day and not open and, and rethink what I was going to do starting the next day on Wednesday. And I said, "All right, let's just do to go." For now, let's see what happens. So we did it for Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. I had to shut back down on Friday because of the fact that there, our seafood is so fresh. I didn't know how much to prep, how much to have available. And I just said, we just can't do this. Let's just shut it down. Hopefully this doesn't last too long. And unfortunately, it went 60 days exactly from March 20th to May 20th. And uh, I literally had heartburn and stress level every single day, wondering whether or not we're going to be re- reopen or not. So, but when we did open in uh, in May, we did um, open up 50% occupancy at a sanitation station. All everybody's wearing masks. And on June 17th, when Governor Kemp opened up, we we were ready. We opened up everything. We still wearing masks. We still at sanitation station. But then. Um, it's been going very well, very great. The, the community's accepted us very well. Now, how was the franchisor during that crisis? Did they give you what you needed in terms of uh, information and education and resources? 
Absolutely. They had our back the whole time. We had uh, meetings every Wednesday on Zoom shift or Zoom uh, meetings and talked with um, every one of them. They had plans. What are you going to do? How you are you holding up? All right. So they had our back. They were helping us in every situation. They helped us with the PPP. Um, so, yeah, I can't say enough about the franchise. They've had our back since day one, since the very beginning. Uh, with helping with training and, and any situation that come up, they, they help us with. Uh, they they've been wonderful, better than I ever expected. It's like a more of a family than it feels like a franchisor. And that's really uh, you know kind of what you're paying for when you buy a franchise, right? You expect that kind of level of support and service uh, from the people who you know have been there and done that. And um, and in this case, this is a crisis no one's been through themselves. But it's great to have you know more brain power trying to solve these difficult problems. Right. Yeah. I agree. So now, did you have to change anything regarding kind of curbside or delivery or takeout? Did any of your systems have to change because of this? Well, yes, we, we do have a designated spot for people to come up and do curbside. And we do bring curbside service, wearing gloves and masks. Um, we um, had a station on the inside when it was really, when we first opened it, a lot of to go, which I mean, literally 50% was to go. Now we're maybe doing 25%. Um, didn't do much other than that. Um, I didn't do any service, uh, takeout service, because by the time they got our food, it'd probably be cold and the freshness would be gone. So that if they wanted to pick it up to go, I'd let them do that. So now, do you think any of that, once the pandemic wanes, is that something that you're going to be able to continue on and see this as maybe a, a silver lining in some ways to just have additional? Yeah, I, yeah, I think so. I, I like the fact that we can uh, bring out curb service. Yeah, it's it's been a it's been a plus. I have to agree with that. So now, um, how did you deal with it with your team for those sixty days? How how was that in terms of kind of keeping your team motivated and um, you know kind of not going too crazy? Hey, so this is Celinda. Um, one of the things that we really reached out to the team had help them understand where we were and um, we uh, maintained continuous communication with them um, through um, what the mandates were. And they were really supportive of us and understanding that at the end of the day, we want to make sure that our products were, you know, fresh and when people brought it home or ate our food that they weren't going to have a disappointing experience. Um, because the staff know that the food is what makes the restaurant. And so, you know, we registered for them um, for their temporary unemployment, supported them in making sure they got their unemployment, as well as making sure they understood when we were ready to reopen. Um, we had um, cleaning days where we sanitized, and then we also um, – they came in and they were educated and they were prepped. And um, look, we didn't have anybody that would not come back. They all came back. And I think that's a testament to how we communicated with them and they were ready to come back and work for us. Yeah, that shows uh, great leadership on your part. Um, now, when this was happening and you were dealing with your team, did the franchisor help you in that regard and give you any advice? Or was this kind of you just going by your gut instinct and your, your own experience? I think one of the things that they were really good about is um, they provided documentation and some training guidelines and reopening um, every state is a little bit different in their guidelines, but there were some general guidelines they provided, which really helped um, give the team um, an understanding of how this was going to work. And it gave us some guardrails as well and a place to start. So now um, everybody's been in the pandemic for a while now. Do you have a rhythm now? Are things getting back to this kind of new normal for you guys? It is. It is. Other than the mass and the things, the fishing that we're doing constantly, um, we're, we're back and running stronger than we've ever been. The, the word is out. The, we're on the map, so to speak, now. Everybody knows we're here. And we actually yesterday had our, one of our busiest Wednesdays ever. So um, 
it just keeps getting better and better. And with the support of the 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 neighborhood, the Forsyth County, and everything like that, it's just been it's been great. So now, if somebody wanted to learn more, have a more substantive conversation with you, or check out the location, where are you located, and what's the website? Yeah, we're at uh, 415 Peachtree Parkway in Cumming, Georgia, um, Suite 255. And um, our website is? It's um, chuckandshack.com, and the location is um, the Cumming location. We also have a Facebook page, which is Chuck and Shack Cumming GA, and um, Instagram as well. Well, congratulations on all your success, and thank you so much for sharing your story today. Well, thank you. We welcome you guys to come visit us. Yeah. Sounds good. Well, thank you again for sharing your story. Um, You're doing important work for your community, and we appreciate you. Thank you. All right. This is Lee Cantor. We will see you all next time on Franchise Marketing Radio.